Kevin. We heard today the presentation about the future of the CRJ. It's been a remarkable airplane, fourth biggest commercial program ever. Great presentation. The, the issue is we look, at, we look forward. Bombardier has consistently, continually improved the airplane's aerodynamics. You've done what you can with the fuselage. It would seem from outside the company that the engine is an Achilles heel to make sure that you stay inside the right envelope and compete against the next gen that are coming, the MRJ, the E2. What do you say to that? Uh, that's a great question, and uh, <clears throat> the question really revolves around operating cost. Operating cost and total operating cost. And uh, if you have the lowest operating cost, you're going to be the airframe preferred. And so our, our uh, mantra has always been to be the lowest uh, seat mile provider uh, to the business, to the industry. And today, the CRJ900 enjoys probably five and a half plus percent fuel burn benefit. And as you saw, uh, we are continuing on to double digits. So 10 plus percent in fuel burn alone. And of course, we are introducing uh, uh, maintenance uh, cost reductions. And also, in, there's still uh, some, some room left to go on the airframe as well too. Aerodynamically, we have a, a plan uh, to uh, in the process to get to 10 percent plus. So when we introduce all that, we will be extremely competitive. I mean, uh, clearly we're the lightest product, uh, most fuel efficient product, same number of seats. Uh, and then you get into total cost, you know. Uh, uh, so basically it comes down to that. So I think you see where I'm going here. Uh, you know, the other guys are spending a lot of capital, introducing brand new airframes, brand new uh, engines, uh, and it costs a lot of money to get uh, get those airplanes out to the marketplace. So it's like the, the argument they're using, for example, E2 versus C-Series, where you've got a brand new airplane and they're making the argument, they're, they're revising a model, so that argument works in the, in the case of the larger airplanes. In this case, you could be using the same argument against their new airplane and you're revising the model. Well, I mean, uh, CRJ is, is clearly a cost-effective platform. People are buying it, and it's the fourth most successful commercial airplane in aviation history. So uh, that speaks for itself and what's coming up. And I can tell you, you know, the operating cost efficiencies uh, that we will introduce over the next uh, two, three uh, years will will be still in line. The other guys are catching up now in terms of the, uh, the cost, uh, unit cost, and when we keep increasing it, then uh, at the end of the day, uh, will still be cost effective, very cost effective. At 10%, where does that put you against the competition, the, the next gen competition? On top of that, their number? Uh, well, at the end of the day, uh, today we enjoy probably, uh, I'm going to say, 5 to 10% of a COC basis, depending on the 900 to 1000 uh, CRJ series you choose. And so that that uh, provides you with uh, a good cushion of, uh, you know, uh, four to five hundred thousand dollars in operating cost per year per aircraft. And so the further reduction in fuel burn, and every fuel burn percentage, is about call it forty-five to fifty thousand dollars per, uh, you know, uh, for a percentage of fuel burn you save. So if, you, if we're at five and a half today and we're going to ten plus, call it another five. So that to me is another two fifty thousand dollars a year you're saving. So you put those together with what we have today, and the airframe still remains extremely competitive in a, in a very, very cost competitive marketplace today. There's no pressure then to no, do something on engines. Right. Well, that's a good point, Addison. Uh, you know, we constantly look to improve the product in all respects, and we are uh, in discussions with GE uh, uh, about how to uh, how to uh, how to eke a little more out of the out of the engine. And uh, those discussions are always underway, and uh, we'll see where that future brings us. Thank you.